Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. My name's James and today we're going to be having a look at how to install a radiator and why we're installing a radiator in this particular room. The radiator we're installing at the moment is a flat panel aluminium anthracite radiator. And recently we've started getting all our radiators direct from the supplier, which means we can pass on even better discounts to you guys out there. So the room that we're installing this radiator at the moment is the kitchen. Now this kitchen already has full wet underfloor heating. So you might be saying, well, why do they want to put a radiator in there as well? Well, there's a couple of good reasons for that. I've always personally thought that a kitchen always needs some sort of radiator, so you can dry off hand towels or anything like that, which is really handy. But also, I've found that if you've got a party going on, sometimes if you turn the underfloor heating on, it can take a good few hours for it to actually get warm and come through the screed. So sometimes it's a good idea to have that instant heat. You can turn on your radiator and get that heat and heat the room up for all your guests. So if we have a quick look at this job, you'll see that the wall that we've got here is where we're gonna be hanging our radiator, pretty much central above the plug that's just down there out of shot. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna feed our radiator from a flow and return from the adjacent toilet just on the other side. Let's have a quick look around and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So our radiator is gonna be on here like so. We're gonna feed our pipes behind here under this kickboard here and through the wall so you can't see them and then going round into the loo here uh, the cupboard's just the other side there you'll see just down there we've got two valves that are set up ready to take our flow and return of the pipes that we're going to put in so first things first I've got to safely try and get out this absolutely gigantic fridge <laughs> So if we have a look down here we can see this is the plug just here there where I want to put the centre of our radiator and our two pipes I want to run along here behind that kickboard there we're just going to make two little holes there and then we're going to pop it through to those two holes that we've got coming through over there. Now later on in this job there is going to be a small piece of skirting board going along here so I mean in the interest of hiding the pipe as much as possible making the install look as good as possible it's going to be a great idea that I channel this out try and find a way to put our two pipes in there and then we'll be able to cover it over when the actual skirting board is put on in a couple of days time. So without further ado, without me waffling on, it's probably best you just... Right, we've got all the pipe working down to where we need it to be. So what we need to do now is actually hang our radiator on the wall, pop our radiator valves on, and then we'll know exactly where we need to bring our pipes up and out. So when we come to do our making good at the end, all we ever see is just two pipes sticking out, and it'll be really, really neat. So let's have a quick look now at how I'm going to do it. Right, so we've got our new radiator here. I'm just going to nice quickly unpack this. As you can see, this is the flat design double panel anthracite rad. And as is always the way with trade radiator stuff, it's really well packaged. It's very important when you're fitting like tall vertical or column radiators like the ones we've got here to know which way the flow comes in. Now at the moment on the system, the way we're doing it at the moment, the flow's come in at the, on the top pipe. If you look here, we're going to be having two pipes, two valves coming in here, so we need to know exactly which way the flow is. Now very, very good of the radiator manufacturer as well to pop a little red arrow uh, telling us which way the flow should come in. So now we know that the front bottom of our radiator should be here. The best thing I always do is just use a small pencil and put a little arrow on the front of it so you know exactly where your flow is going to come in and which way around to orientate your radiator. You've seen us measure up and install these radiators on some of the other videos that we've done, so I'm not going to show you how to do that now, but you can watch us nice and quickly do it so you get a bit of a gist of an idea about what we're doing here. Right then, so now we've got the radiator up on the wall installed. We've got our level, so we know that it's level and lovely. All we need to do now is prepare the radiator for piping up. We've got a few bungs on here. We've got a bleed bung and a standard bung that are going to go up the top. I'm going to pop my bleed bung just on this side here because then it's covered up a little bit by this fridge when we put it back. 
and then we've got a nicer chrome bung on that side there that will look good. Then all I'm going to do is PTFE up the two valves at the bottom there and pop them in and then we'll do a quick piping up and then you can have a look at the job when we're finished. Right then, so we've got the radiator installed now and everything's great. We've got it on actually at the moment and it's burning hot. We've balanced the system out and we've filled it all back up. The thing I want to address now is how we're going to make these pipes good. Now, like I said, the great thing we can do here is if you pop the skirting board off, we've taken out this bottom piece of plasterboard here like that and everything's looking really, really cool. We knew that we didn't have to worry about the electrical wires there because they go straight into the back there and out of the way. So what we've done, we've invested in some skirting board and we're going to use that skirting to cover up our pipes like so, that's going to run down behind the fridge there and terminate somewhere behind the fridge. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to use some builders mate to just pop round here, then we can paint our pipes the same colour as the wall at the back here. So boom, there we go, all done. We've got our radiator nicely installed. All I've got to do now is see what colour we want to do the skirting board, or even if the customer wants it varnished or whatever. I think you'd agree that the way we've run our pipes through from the existing system has really made use of the idea of using that skirting to try and hide the pipes. The radiator looks really good up against this lovely fridge and also the anthracite matches the doors and the windows in this house as well. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And obviously we've got some nice decorative valves to go with it. So all in all, a very good install. So I hope this video has given you a better idea about why you might want to install a radiator in a kitchen, even if there is underfloor heating already. And also it gives you a bit of an idea about how possible it is to fit a radiator. I mean, I think a lot of people would have looked at this job and just thought, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. It's going to be really, really difficult. But with a little bit of planning, a little bit of foresight, then often it's quite possible to put radiators in almost any part of the house. Anyway, if you need any more help, then please visit the website traderadiators.com. And thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.